Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two of the news bulletin for today. And I have, again, a bunch of really interesting articles and connections I made uh, with these stories that I haven't really been able to cover lately, so I'm not really hyping it up here. It's kind of interesting. Uh, the first one I have up is the whole drought thing and praying for rain. U.S. hit by worst drought in 25 years. Food prices rise. And it says here, worsening drought in the United States has pushed grain prices to new highs as crops are withering and the temperatures are rising. And if I remember correctly, the number that I saw was 40% of the crops were lost. And this is uh, something that's a good indicator of what's going on around the country as far as uh, the drought goes. The water shortages, all of Indiana placed under water shortage warning. Worsening drought conditions have placed the entire state of Indiana under a water shortage warning. So, oh, look at that. The Department of Homeland Security extended the warning to all 92 counties. That's going to be our buddies. If the crap does ever uh, get to hit the fan here soon, you know, and it's not like I want it to happen, but at the same time, uh, it doesn't really seem like anything is going to change peacefully here. So they might as well just get their show on the road, right? Oh, when we do have this kind of um, scenario, uh, continuity of government basically some kind of collapse or disaster uh, Homeland Security is going to be there uh, with FEMA uh, directing people where to go so it's interesting because it says here that the state is asking those who use 100,000 gallons of water or more daily to cut usage by 10 to 15 percent because reservoirs are being depleted so they're talking about farmers and this is the effect that this is having um, on the food supply so it's not just it's not just that uh, they're not getting enough rain, but then when they try to artificially rain, i.e. Uh, sprinkler system, there's no water there. So, um, Next up, police are cracking down on cigarettes being thrown out of car windows. So, Just another reason for police to, um, uh, to mess with you. They're saying now eventually that uh, you can't smoke in your cars, you get pulled over for that. And trust me, I don't like this either because I ride my bike as, le as well as uh, driving a car, you know, and I don't like seeing those cigarette butts thrown out the window because one of the days it's going to hit me. So do not toss your cigarette out the window. Troopers say they will pull you over. There's already a statute on the books that makes it illegal to throw out a cigarette from a moving vehicle. You could also get cited for littering. Local churches are praying or have been praying for rain as governor organizes rally. Thousands of people, 8,000 as of Thursday morning, signed on to Governor Rick Perry on today, it says here, join Governor Rick Perry on today in a nationwide day of prayer and fasting to be held at the Reliance Stadium in Houston. So actually, I thought this was going to be um, in the other state, um, in a different state, but it's actually in Houston, which makes it interesting because uh, just talking to people locally, I live in a pretty much like a, like I said, near Amish and stuff. So it's a farm community, it's a farm area. And uh, people were saying, yeah, that at their churches, you know, I've seen the signs, pray for rain. And this is this was like two weeks ago. So now all of a sudden when I saw the Tom Vilsack, uh, the Department of Agriculture, uh, basically going out saying that he uh, is praying for rain, telling people to do that. I'm getting on my knees and waiting for a divine intervention. Well, he got it, right? Because what was interesting was the very next day after he said this, uh, what happened? A trickle of relief with a burst of rain. That's right. They spray the living shit out of us with chemicals and aerosols, and they cause it to rain. So I mentioned this to people in my, in, around, right in my neighborhood. I said, if it rains, it's because they want it to rain. They're allowing it to rain, our gods. And if it's not raining and there's a drought, there's a good chance, not 100%, it could be sunspots or whatever, but uh, if there's no rain, it means that our masters, our global masters, our gods, are not allowing us to have rain. So when you see douchebags like Rick Perry and Tom Vilsack and the federal government and all these politicians saying, we got to pray for rain, right? And then all of a sudden it comes, well, that's because they caused it. But see, people miss the point, you know. All of a sudden, Christians are like, oh, uh, it's, uh, it doesn't have anything to do with separation of church and state. And the atheists take an issue with the Vilsack's prayer for rain. Um, so, you know, it's just... They're missing the big point. The, the whole drought was caused by man. And then the, 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 uh, the rain was caused by man. So, but like I said here, you know, uh, the sun with the solar spots is going on. And it's one of the worst solar storms in history. Uh, we're talking about earlier this month. Uh, also, another thing to look at is what? Is the BP oil spill. I mentioned this before, um, which is actually uh, here in the United States is supposedly causing, um, we have like, a bunch of high pressure so there's no rain and it's also affecting in the UK possibly this is what some people are saying and even 
scientists and that, that, um, that is being caused by the BP oil disaster. And I'm talking about how it was the, the Arctic cold front that moved through in the UK. Usually they have the warm waters or the warm air coming from the Gulf Stream. Well, the BP oil disaster kind of jacked that all up. So they're saying in this abstract study by scientists, BP oil spill may cause an irreparable damage to the Gulf Stream global climate thermal regulation activity. So there's many reasons for that. Um, uh, one of them is symbolic, making the Mother Earth bleed uh, and destroying um, something like this, like the Gulf Stream, which has all kinds of side effects. And then you think about the nuclear disaster in Japan, and you're just like, hmm, you know, I mean, what are these people doing? Are they trying to, like, just kill the Earth? Well, I, they're not going to be able to do it, but they're going to kill all of us because we need to live here. But don't worry, the experts are trying. The other experts are trying. Um, it says here that the U.S. geoengineers are going to spray sun-reflecting chemicals from blue. Now, we've heard this many, many times, but it says experiment in New Mexico will try to establish a possibility of cooling the planet. A possibility of cooling the planet. So, by dispersing sulfite aerosols. So, I've already gone through this before. I've, I've talked about the Wellsbach seeding, cloud seeding patent that was filed a long time ago. And one of the side effects of this is actually it causes warming. So, sometimes it does actually cause a brief cooling. But overall, when they spray those particles, they're up there for a while. They're not going anywhere. Just like the radiation and all the crap from the uh, nuclear and BP, the, basically the Fukushima disaster and the BP disaster, it's not going anywhere for a while. So all this crap and aerosols that they've been spraying since at least 1996 now, almost 20 years now, uh, we can celebrate in 2016 when it comes up. We're going to celebrate that the 20 years of being sprayed like pest and the chemicals up there and aerosols are not going anywhere for a long time. So, and then we have Freak Storm Batters Moscow Car Swamp by Floods. This is from July 13th. We already know about the floods that they had at the other place, uh, the other location in Russia. But it says here, Moscow had suffered a whole week of tropically hot weather with none of the evening storms typical for the season. Then on Friday the 13th, ooh, that's when my internet got cut off, the heavens opened at once with lightning striking several times in quick succession. So... Then Iran drought, part of soft war by West, says Vice President of Iran. Remember, I just covered this. But he says here, I'm sus suspicious about the drought in the southern part of the country. And he says that um, they are influencing Iran's climate conditions using technology. So he says this level of drought is not normal. Next up, Olympic security chaos, depth of the G4S security crisis reveals. Yeah, uh, you've already heard this. I've gone over this many times. I'm going to keep moving. But it's all about the security holes, the lapse in security, uh, which I think the whole thing was planned. So I know InfoWars beat that shiznit to death about, oh, loops in security. They're never, you're never going to have enough security to, quote, to stop these terrorists because if these terrorists are working for governments and shadow governments, they're going to get in. So quit worrying about the damn, oh, there's holes, there's leaks in security. Because I think the whole thing was to put that out there, disseminate it through all the conspiracy websites and stuff like that. And then they can say, what? Oh, yeah, you know what? We better just uh, call up uh, all the troops and everything that we have military-wise and, you know, and get really prepared for this thing like they were probably going to do originally. The other thing about the Olympics, too, is that uh, I, you know, I've kind of pondered is that this could actually be used to discredit people who are saying that this is going to happen. I'm not saying that something is going to happen at the Olympics. I just put this information out there to consider so that if it does happen, you know where it came from. Not some right-wing extremist from Norway, not some Muslim extremist from the Arab. It's going to be a Zionist extremist, and that's what it's going to be. And they're not going to say that, and it's going to trigger a world war. But if it doesn't happen, it doesn't mean that it couldn't possibly have happened or it wasn't planned. So, no fly zone imposed ahead of Olympics, airspace restrictions in place over London with warning that planes that stray into zone could ultimately be shot down. It sounds just like Chicago's uh, summit. So, this is, they're just setting the template for the future. U.S. security agents at Heathrow for Olympics, foreign officials are drafted to bolster security at the U.K. airports in the run-up to the Olympics. So, these are the TSA agents known for groping and prodding and just all sorts of crazy stuff. TSA let 25 illegal aliens attend flight school owned by illegal aliens. So, false sense of security, just like George Carlin said, right? Take a fucking chance. You know, quit worried about everything, man. It says here, UK military drafts vets to guard Olympics. So, yes, this British military has been forced, been forced to hold an emergency draft to add another 3,500 troops to its Olympic security contingents. 
So, and it says here, most of them are re returning from Afghanistan. So, yep, there you go. And remember, the biggest thing that you can get from that whole InfoWars coverage of the G4S laps and loops, whatever, in security, was what? Was that they were warned about a big uh, uh, possible crisis, big national emergency that they were getting ready for. 1,200 more troops for London Olympics. So, they put 1,200 more military troops on 48-hour notice to work as guards during the 2012 London Zion Olympics. I've covered this as well. We know, and the reason I'm saying that is because of the letters that make up the word Zion or Zion. Um, Zion Olympics in London coincide with um, a Jewish holiday, Tisha B'Av, commemoration of the destruction of the temples in Jerusalem. So this is pretty interesting. And let's not forget the Iranians and the whole Muslim world are preparing for the holy month of Ramadan. That's when they actually reported that there was huge security around this uh, creation of this logo uh, and that people were forbidden to speak about it. Sarah Brown, the wife of Gordon Brown, the prime minister in waiting, started her career in Wolf Ollens. So there is a very much bigger story here than meets the eye, but thank goodness Iran has drawn attention and I'm very pleased to see that the Daily Mail. Um, sure. Now this man, just by the way, was also the designer for this, for the Jewish Museum in Berlin. I mean, if you look at the, <laughs> the aerial here, the aerial view is also Zion, uh, and uh, this is an extraordinary imp imprinting on our cultures of this Jewish supremacist concept of Zionism, world Zionism, the new world order. Because as Gordon Brown said in the Knesset, he thought he was doing a great favor in smarming up to the Knesset, but actually he did the very opposite to what they like. He said that uh, the world Jewry has the greatest outreach the greatest influence in the world thinking he was telling them what they wanted to hear but actually they like to do it by hidden hand so he was not actually and there and therefore he had certain demise in consequence all right welcome back u.s military analyst israel might pull out a false flag attack in london and blame it on iran they're talking about gordon duff from veterans today ohio he says israel is likely to try to participate or sorry precipitate a war on iran by staging an attack on the u.s its forces in the persian gulf region or on a european nato target most likely the london olympics there has been highly credible information that an attack on the olympics is planned and the first thing I heard was that it was going to be anarchists. Now what? Oh, Breivik style, lone wolf is deadliest threat to the London 2012 Olympic Games. So they say um, Islamic extremists, independent of CIA-run organizations, may be the most likely source of such an attack, but dissident Irish Republican groups and right-wing groups like Breivik was talking about uh, should not be discounted. And of course, I've already made videos about the link between Breivik and Israel and how Basically, he's supporting what they are pushing. That's why he called it his own crusades. It says here, Dark Knight Rises, Colorado Theater shooting suspect, James Holmes, likely a lone wolf. Hmm. Shooting leaves 14 dead in the U.S. state of Colorado. Time for some symbolism. July is 7, 20 is 2, and 2012, of course, is 5. 7 plus 2 is 9, 9 plus 5 is 14. And the executions may have occurred half past midnight of the 20th, but it was right on the dawn of what? Right at uh, the cusp of July 19th, 13 days before Lafnas, which is a great Sabbath festival, one of the Illuminati's human sacrifice nights. Gets more interesting. Also, July 20th in the year 70, first Jewish-Roman War siege of Jerusalem. It says here, storms the fortress north of the Temple Mount. So let's not forget July 27th when the Olympics kicks off, commemoration of the destruction of the temples in Jerusalem. And, this of, and we're talking about the famous Second Temple, which was an important Jewish shrine that stood on the Temple Mount of Jerusalem. And what about century 16, the 16th century? Well, that was what? The resurgence, the rise of Persia, Iran. But was there a second shooter? Police are searching for another. And the people in the movie theater didn't even know it was real. They just sat there playing dead for almost a minute, yet the officers were on scene within a minute. So, huh. The lone wolf also had an arsenal of weapons. It's not just about gun control or blood sacrifices. It's about the dark night programming. Thank you.